welcome, welcome none other than Elder. Okay, she don't want me to say that. Pastor, she don't want me to say that. <laughs> Erica Brooks, uh, she's so humble. Give her a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Can we just celebrate Dr. Sunday, the, Sunday, the visionary of this vision, the entrepreneur mandate? Thank you. I'm super, super, super excited. How many of you know that God has anointed us for the marketplace? God has anointed us for the marketplace. And can I tell you that although as a pastor, all ministry is not pulpit, can I do pulpit? Yeah, that's, that's real easy. It's, it, it's real comfortable, but somebody got to go among them. And the word even tells us that he says, go out into the highway and the hedges and compel them to come. So as a financial consultant, how many of you know, ever, anybody ever had some financial distress? That it can, be, it can give you a headache. It can be a little bit overwhelming. And so I can go and I can do a financial workshop and somebody's going through divorce. So guess what? I got to minister to that. Somebody may be going through bankruptcy and, and I don't understand how this happened or going through foreclosure and I have to minister to that. So we, our um, gift in the marketplace is ministry. And it's going to draw the people in. And so my anointing, again, Dr. as Dr. Sonny said, I'm Erica Brooks, and my um, ministry is I Know My Value. And what I know my value stands for is I know my value because Jesus paid the price, but also I know my value in the marketplace. And so um, one thing that I think that we do wrong as believers is that we believe um, that, you know, a lot of we get prophecies from year after year. You're going to, um, we prophesy houses, we prophesy cars, we prophesy marriages. But I preached last night a New Year's Eve service and I said, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm not about to prophesy any houses or cars. Because the word didn't tell us that we're going to be rich. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, I have given you the power Another version says, I've given you the ability to get well. And, but then the second part to that, it says, not for us, not for the houses, not for the cars, and there's nothing wrong with having those things. He says, so that I can establish my covenant. In other words, I've given you the ability to get wealth for my glory, for my benefit. And if I jump all the way back to Genesis, he says that I will make you a great nation I will um, make your name great, and then I, you will be blessed to be a blessing. In other words, it says, okay, Lord, when you increase my territory, you mean to tell me it ain't all just for me? But what are we doing with our abilities? And so I, what, what the message that I preached last night, and I'm going to go spiritual. Um, I'm going to give you all some natural stuff, but I have to go back, was um, the Lord gave me Haggai 2.9, which is the glory of the latter house. And the scripture um, basically says on the Amplified Version, it says the latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. But then it says, in this place you shall um, have peace. But in the Amplified it says, and prosperity, declares the Lord of hosts. And if we could look at the, 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 the context of that was there, the, the former house was talking about the temple, the Solomon, you know, all the fine things or whatever. But the latter house is talking about the grace under the covenant of Jesus Christ. We're in the last days. We are in the latter house. We, and so God says that the latter right now shall be greater than the former. And not only is he going to give us peace, but he's going to give us prosperity. But can I tell you, we have to do some stuff. If we don't serve an abracadabra God. So what God gave me, March 1st, 2016, I had pneumonia and I was sitting back. And in that, God had to get me into a still place. And in that still place, God spoke to me and he said, stop getting ready and be ready. He said, stop getting ready and be ready. Now here I am, a marketplace minister, and I had established several businesses and churches and didn't do my own. That's one thing that we do as givers, is that we give to everyone else. We give, we give, but I didn't have my own stuff structured properly. And so God began to strategically tell me, I need you to do this. This is going to be the LLC, and this is going to be the nonprofit, and this is what's going to be the 513C, and I want you to do this, and I want you to do that. And I began to structure my own stuff. And then also, as the Bible tells us that our gift makes room for us, beginning to what, it, what, what, it, what are we doing with our gifts? And so one thing that I think that we miss is although we're men and women of God, we can monetize our gift. 
When he said our gift makes room for us, it just doesn't mean that in the pulpit. It doesn't mean just us serving in a capacity of ministry, but our gift can change our household economics. So if your gift is teaching, why aren't you coaching? If your gift is teaching, why aren't you tutoring? If your gift is teaching, why aren't you doing train the trainer? It's the gift to make room. I, I, I have a friend, I had a friend with a PhD who was unemployed for a long time because it ain't the degree that makes room. The degree is icing on the cake. I know people with master's degrees that are unemployed because a degree does not make room for us. The charisma does not make room for us, but the gift makes room for us. Miles Monroe talked about that a lot. He says, why do you think there are so many people with all these credentials that are not in position, that are either unemployed or underemployed because it ain't the, it's, it's not the education. The education is important, but it's the icing on the cake. It's meant to be married with our gift. And so we will never, ever be feel, have that fulfillment until we begin to align with our gift. So I, I talked about Deuteronomy um, 818 says, God give us the power, i.e. ability to get wealth. So what are we doing with our ability? Believers, I want to tell you that we talk about the supernatural, but the super spiritual is on top of the natural. Yes. We got to do the natural part. Yes. We fail with the natural part. And so when the Bible says write the vision and make it plain, what does that mean? Write the, the, write the um, business plan. What is the natural part? The natural part is the part of being ready, is making sure that our, our, our things are structured properly. So let me tell you why that's very important to be ready. Um, okay, that was, 20, that was March 1st, 2016, when God said, be ready. After that, I went to the Marketplace Conference with um, Dr. Bill Winston. I was in a class. There was an accountant that talked about, there was a gentleman, a pastor, who um, somebody wanted to give him over 100 acres of land. Well, they went to him and they asked him, are you a 5013C? And he said, yes. Well, he came to the accountant and said, hey, I need to become a 5013C. Someone wants to give me all this land, but guess what? She said, I can do your paperwork in a week. But once I file it with IRS, I'm not responsible for their time frame. Why do people give? They give for two reasons. Number one, what's in it for me? I can write it off. That's the number one reason. The big companies give $100,000, $50,000, $200,000 because I need a write-off. It ain't about I love your organization so much, I need to write it off. And this particular thing that you're doing in your nonprofit fits into our core values. Number two, and maybe someone that says, you know what, I really believe in, in, in youth empowerment, I really believe in literacy, that's the second reason why people give. Well, guess what? This was the month of October when that happened. He was not a 5013C, they gave it to someone else. So that's the importance of being ready. I work with um, a, a young lady that does government contracting. Guess what? Government contracting do not deal with individuals. You need to be an Inc. You need to be an LLC. And it's not expensive. I can tell you this, it is less money to be a LLC in Georgia than a sew-in. It is less money than some Jordans. Be ready. It's not super expensive, meaning the filing fees to become and do what we need to do. So it's very important. Some people do not want to write a check to Erica Brooks, but they will write a check to I Know My Value. They will write a check to Relentless Ministries Worldwide. And so it's very, very, very important that we do the natural part and that we be um, in position. So I have a few other things I want to go over. Um, and, uh, one, one big thing with the entrepreneur um, mandate is just understanding that we're going to have to um, build a team and we're going to have to get started. Don't think about that you have to have everything figured out at one time, but the key is getting started. The key is getting moving. I remember I'm still in corporate temporarily working on <laughs> um, that, that exit strategy, but one thing that I learned and someone told me in a training, she said, Erica, what is it that you really want to do? It's because what I realized is that when you put in 55 hours in corporate and you go back and you give your business what's left over. How many of us are so exhausted when we get home, we don't put anything into our business? And so what I began to do is shift it and re realize that if I can spend X amount of hours in corporate, that I am going to invest in my business because faith without works is dead. 
And so I began to do intentional Tuesdays, and I've decided that on certain days of the week, this is, I don't care what's going on, these are the days that I'm working my business. I began to invest, and then I began to see the fruit in my business. So it's very, very, very important that we begin to do the work. Also, it's important, a lot of times we go on um, sites like LegalZoom, nothing against them other sites. Well, you know what, let me, I don't want anybody in my business in the body of Christ, I don't want, but can I tell you that I've had to go back and correct, I, I don't trust always that sterile environment. I've had people go online and I'm gonna incorporate and I'm in the background correcting it. The first person, they had a nonprofit that was about to be dissolved because the organization didn't tell them how to stay compliant. After three years, you don't file a 990, your organization is going to be dissolved. I've had other people in their state, they didn't tell you about that you have to pay a, a renewal fee. So it's one thing you have to know who's structuring your business, who's developing, anybody can structure a business, but who can help you be compliant? Who can help you be successful in your business? And so one thing that we do with I Know My Value is we help you from vision to implementation. So, so it's like, I'm, I have a business, so now what? What do I do? What do I do next? And for the nonprofit people, I challenge you, decide if you want to become a 5013C charitable organization. And the difference is nonprofit is just simply your nonprofit in your state. And then 5013C basically means that you are under the IRS code as a charitable organization where you open yourself up for more opportunities for grants and things of that nature. Some grants, most grants, will not touch an organization unless they are a 5013C. And so also, just a quick nugget, remember organizations don't get funded, programs do. So even when you think of things like the boys club, the girls club, oh man, they got $100,000. The boys and girls club didn't get $100,000, a program under there, and those funds have to specifically go to that program. And so it's just so many things and so many ins and out, but this is the time I believe a lot of times we've said, this is going to be my year. And then the next year, this is going to be my year. We've been saying that for five years, seven years. Why not you? Why not you? And so I'm super excited. Um, one thing that I'm going to do for the attendees only of the Entrepreneur Mandate, if you're serious about starting your business, I will do a 50% business development discount only for the attendees. So you will have to, my cards are out there, send me an email, erica at iknowmyvalue.com, and just say 50 off. And then we go collaborate and decide, do you want an LLC? Do you want a nonprofit? And so I'll do that from now to January the 15th for attendees of the Entrepreneur Mandate, because you showed up and you decided that, hey, I want to come forward and get started with my business. Amen. And I can go on and on and on and on and on. And then the, the last thing I want to talk about is finance. It is so important. The Bible tells us that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And so even as entrepreneurs, I want to quickly talk about the difference between group insurance and um, individual insurance. A lot of us are still in corporate or we're still in a nine to five job, but I wanna challenge us that we need individual insurance because when we leave our job, do you know that your insurance is not transferred with you? It's not a part of COBRA continuing coverage. So what if someone has, I've seen several cases where someone has been on a job for 15 years, when they started the job, they were in good health, they would not get an individual policy, and then when something happened, they went to work, their badge didn't work, or something happened along the way, now they're in, uninsurable. And so most people will say, well, Erica, I don't need life insurance. I have 300,000 on my job, I have 250,000. That policy is owned by your employer. And the day you leave is the day your insurance is over. It may, be, it may take 30 days, but COBRA does not continue that. And so it is very important to have coverage outside of your employer. And it is it's, it's, it's very important just to understand that insurance is not death insurance. It is life insurance. It's meant to indemnify. What does that mean? It means return you back to your current state. So it's like full coverage. Okay, if you have a house, if you have cars, there should be enough insurance to, if something happens today, your house is paid off. Then your spouse doesn't have to worry about what we're gonna do. If something happens today, the cars are paid off. So that's a part of that leaving an inheritance to our children's children because that, and that's the vehicle. 
That is the vehicle. And so, um, quick testimony, and I'll get off stage. I had the Holy Spirit was 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 pushing me. With my nephew, began to um, decide that he wants to be a dope boy. He's 25. And so I said, okay, since you want to be a dope boy, this is my brother's son. I asked my brother, I said, well, do you have insurance on him? And my brother thinking, oh, he's 25, he, you know, whatever. And I said, well, guess what? People are going to be looking at me if something happens to him and my sister. And so the Holy Spirit pushed me, and I got a life policy on him. And then in the, in the, in the spring, I was getting resentful, and I said, why do I got to pay for this? This is not my child. I don't want to pay for this. And I let it lapse. But I said, nope, the Holy Spirit, back in, um, in um, August, the Holy Spirit nudged me, you better get that insurance back because he's still doing the same thing. Two weeks ago, my nephew was shot three times. Six rounds, three, two hit him in the back, and one hit him in the leg. And so we rush to the hospital, and we don't know what's going on. I'm just like, and I promise you, when I got the call, when my sister called me, I literally had his policy information in my hand. But what I'm saying is we have to use wisdom. If you know, look at what's happening in the news, young people are going out of here. And we and GoFundMe is replacing life insurance. That is not God's intent. That is not kingdom. My nephew's 25 years old. Guess how much his insurance is? $15.77. I can't even eat at Olive Garden for that amount. And so the Holy Spirit, thank God he survived. He survived by the grace of God, but the Holy Spirit quickened my spirit and said, you know what? He's in that lifestyle. Not if he gets shot. When he gets shot. Because he's not street for real. And when he deals with somebody who's really street, something's going to go down. And so, would you rather have a $15 a month problem or a $10,000 at one time problem? And so that's where the body of Christ has to be educated. That a good man lives in inheritance to his children's children. And guess what? I paid a policy. It's not going to my brother. I'll take care of his. He has a son. I'll make sure his son is taken care of. I'm paying that policy. But that's the inheritance. I'll make sure that my his son is taken care of or whatever things happen. But I have life insurance on my mother or my father it is our responsibility and so these are the conversations that we need to have even as entrepreneurs think about if you're in business groom your children your siblings let them know what you want to happen if something were to happen to me what is your succession plan miles monroe had a succession plan when he transitioned his son was taking over the church and his daughter was taking over the business do we have a succession plan? So those are things that we want to talk about. But again, I do business development, program development, um, fin finances. My information is out on the table next to the entrepreneur mandate. And so I'm, I'm super excited. So let's stop getting ready and be ready. Amen. How many people know that God loves us? But not only does he love us, but the songwriter said that he loves us so so much and I was really blessed by the worship team that was here this morning it really ministered to me I felt the love of God and it was just the message that God was given to us at this moment I hope you took something great away from that also amen so if you'll stand on your feet ginger yourself up so we can get excited for Pastor Pothier when she comes in we'll already get ourselves loose a little bit let's just sing about the love of God. Oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us so. And if you know this part, he loves us. Oh,
and they taught me in nursery school. Yes, Jesus loves me. Sing louder. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Like you really mean it. Yes, yes, Jesus loves me. How do you know? For the Bible tells me so. Let's sing it one more time. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you go through your week, this week, whatever comes, come what may. The things that you interact with, the people that you interact with, the circumstances come up. Remember that Jesus loves you. Amen. Thank you. What they say, you be always ready. You guys, stand to your feet. We have... The amazing, I mean, she's humble, she's a servant, she's a, I mean, that real talk, Kim, that she real. She keep it real all the time, amen? But you know, uh, she, she has an amazing testimony. But you know what I love about her team, Angel, and her team? She, she and I'm going to try not to get emotional about it, but it, it is what it is, amen? Her team said that she just going to let God use her. That's a, Amen? And that's what we should do wherever we go. We let God use us. Amen? Yeah. Because we get it twisted sometimes. We want to change the program, but we're going to actually let her do what God has told her to do. None other than Real Talk Kim is here. What is going on? Like, I think y'all are pretty serious because if you're going to come to a conference on New Year's Day when you could be eating collard greens and black eyed peas, I think you're serious about 2018. What, what, what? I am so honored that I get to be here today. I'm honored. Uh, I'm honored that out of all the white people with mohawks, you let me come. <laughs> Super thankful y'all can be seated. You know, we're walking into 2018, and the way we left 2017 is huge because what we have, what we do in church is we come in and we shout and we shout and we shout. Even in the business world, we just like, we just like prophesying, prophesying. We're going to go here and prophesying. We're going to do this. We're going to do great big things. We're putting hashtag hustle up on social media, and we're sitting on the couch eating bonbons, scratching our behind. Waiting for a miracle. We're just waiting for something to fall out of the sky. And we shout and shout. If we don't learn how to get our hustle on, we're going to for the rest of our life be in church shouting, I receive it, I receive it. We have to put God in the midst and in the mix. And a lot of times, you know, in Ephesians 3.20, it says that he's going to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. He says that, you know what that means? That means that things that you've seen in your life, People that you've watched, your family legacy, that is nothing as to what God's going to do in your life. Because he's going to do exceedingly, which means we can't even fathom. We can go and get five degrees. And some of you sitting here right now, you got so many degrees and you can't pay one student loan back. You can't get a job because you overqualified. 
Because you got all these jobs trying to get your father to say, good job. I'm so proud of you. And you never got it. So you kept going for more degrees and more degrees. And now you're in debt and can't get a job, honey, because you're overqualified. And so what's happening is you're getting resentful, resentful, resentful. And before long, this is where the enemy gets you. Because he's got you focused on people instead of him. Because he's the God that takes people that nobody's, they, they sleeping on these people. And he's over here saying, oh, I'm walking into a season where they're sleeping on you. But while they're sleeping on you, I'm going to be cultivating something. Oh, you thought that you were old news. You thought that your mistakes were final. But he's saying, I'm about to, if you get your mind and your heart in line and say, God, I trust you even when I can't trace you. And you get your mind and heart there and say, you watch what God's going to do. Can't touch this. Nah, 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 nah. But so often what we do is we get in that place and we begin, we don't let go of the people that were in your old season. The people that are termites to your family. You're busy trying to build empires. You're busy trying to do the work of the Lord. You're busy and they're eating away at your foundation because you would rather have a hundred pennies than four quarters. You would rather have people around you that are constantly, you're just having to buy their food. They won't even go eat with you unless you take in the tab. It's time that we stop hanging out with people that won't talk to us when they see us in a crowd. You see what I'm saying? Because we would rather at least just feel the love and validation instead of saying, you know what? If I got to do, I'm going to be in my own lane. And I'm going to be over here by myself because fitting in with the crowd just makes me invisible. So I'm going to do my thing over here and I'm going to start being my own boss. And I'm going to begin to just step out and begin to walk on water. And God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to let every, some of y'all need to literally control all delete some people today. You need to not mean, not with that spirit of, because there's sometimes in life what happens is we walk around and say, walk around saying, everybody's haters, everybody's haters. No, when everybody doesn't like you and every circle you go in, you're always the loud mouth, chunky butt. You're always stirring up stuff. Maybe you are the common denominator. <laughs> But it's having to get to that place where we begin to lay hands on our hearts and say, God, I'm not walking into another season like this. I'm not going to be depressed anymore. I'm not going to be sickly anymore. I'm not going to feel in insignificant anymore by putting myself into places and into circles where they make me feel like I have to sit at the front rows like a VIP in church anymore. I'm not going to go to places where when I walk in a room, they look me up and down and make me feel less than no God. I'm going where I'm celebrated and not tolerated. So, Father, I give you permission. I give you permission to begin to exfoliate and detox some stuff. Even if I'm in a season all by myself, if I'm over here and ain't got no friends, I'm going to start writing that book you put inside of me. I'm not going to try to uncover myself until you tell me it's time. We're over here praying and we're praying and praying and praying and praying. And you're starving because you fasted so much and nothing's changed. Because you're not getting your heart posture or your mind posture changed. It's all on the outside. That's society. Society. The doctor will tell you, you better get your blood pressure under control. You're going to be just like your family. It's a family genetic.